order this first meeting of the Elections and Rules Committee for Wednesday, February 7th. My name is Jeremiah Bay Ellison, and I am the chair of this committee. Uh, with me at the dais this morning are council members uh, Johnson, Goodman, Jenkins, Schrader, Bender, uh, Cunningham, and Fletcher. Uh, let the record reflect we have a quorum. Uh, colleagues, this first item on our agenda is a public hearing for the appointment to the city's ethical practices board under the council's rules. Um, appointments to the ethical practices board are subject to public hearing conducted by this body. Uh, there is an unusual twist in this particular instance because the city is not the appointing authority for this particular board. Uh, because of its work and the nature of its oversight of the city's elected policymakers with regards to ethics, these appointments are actually made by a three-person committee that is made up of the, uh, of the chief judge of the Hennepin County District Court and the deans of the law schools at the University of Minnesota and University of St. Thomas. Um, our ethics officer, Susan Trammell, is here to present the issue before we open to public hearing. Ms. Trammell. Chair Eliasson and members of the committee, Susan Trammell, ethics officer. I'm appearing today on behalf of the appointing panel which consists of Dean Robert Vischer from the University of St. Thomas Law School, Dean J Gary Jenkins from the University of Minnesota Law School, and Chief Judge Ivy Bernhardson, who is the Chief Judge of Hennepin County. The three of those individuals make up the appointing panel and make all the appointments to the Ethical Practices Board. They have conducted interviews from the applicants who applied last fall, and have recommended that Walter Bauck um, be reappointed for a, a subsequent term to the Ethical Practices Board. He started serving in 2010 and, and has been our chair numerous times, has presided over hearings, and has been an invaluable resource on the board. They also recommend that Mr. Mehmet uh, Konar Steenberg be appointed at, to fill the spot that was vacated by um, Virginia Ray Bly, who resigned at the end of her term to pursue, she um, wanted to pursue other options in her volunteer time. And Mr. Konar Stenberg is a professor at the uh, William Mitchell Hamlin Law School, and he has been involved in government practice curriculum there. He also um, has teached in administrative law, constitutional law, and environmental law. And prior to teaching, he served as an assistant attorney general and worked in private practice. So he brings great qualifications to the board. And the appointing panel is um, in the belief that both these appointments will be of good service to the city. I have notified both applicants, but due to the scheduling time frame, once we found out about this meeting, they were unable to switch their calendars to be here today. What will happen after today's hearing is that uh, the three members of the panel can receive comments in writing to their email addresses. Uh, in addition, I can take comments and forward them <coughs> to the appointing panel should there be any. If there are no comments or comments that are received don't change the mind of the appointing panel, on February 5th, the hearing time will close and no more comments can be submitted and the two appoint, um, recommended appointees will become members and will be sworn in at the March meeting. Any questions? Uh, I just wanted the record to reflect that we've been joined by council members Orsami and Palmasana. Um, do, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Trammell? Um, all right, uh, seeing none. Uh, at this time, um, I already kind of went through that. Uh, hearing no further testimony, I will close this public oh. hearing. Oh, we, we need to open it first. Oh, sorry. At this time, I'll open the floor uh, to any public uh, testimony on these two candidates. Uh, I also invite each candidates who are not here to come and make any uh, comment for the record. Sweet. Uh, hearing no further testimony, I will close the public hearing. Again, because there is no formal action to be taken on this appointment, I will simply move to receive and file the staff report uh, for this item. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say no. 
Uh, the ayes have it, and we have completed our, bu um, our business on that item. Um, yeah, on behalf of the council, I would like to thank both candidates. All right, the second item this morning pertains to uh, amending the council rules. Uh, here to present the items is our city clerk, Casey Carl. Mr. Carl. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. As noted, my name is Casey Carl. I have the privilege of serving as city clerk, and in that capacity, I also serve as the parliamentary advisor to council, its officers, chair, and committees. Under the city charter, the council is the governing body of the municipal government, and all legislative and policymaking authority is vested in the council, except those powers specifically assigned to another officer, board, or department. And in order to conduct the business of the city in an orderly manner, the council is explicitly empowered to adopt rules governing its own proceedings. This is a set forth in section 4.4 of the city charter. The current rules were developed and have evolved over many years since the municipal corporation was incorporated. In 2013, a complete revision of the rules was completed, which was then designated as the definitive rules of the city council, and that revision has been subsequently amended to continue adapting the rules of the council to its needs, including its committees. The last amendment was completed as a revision in 2016. This uh, afternoon, staff is bringing forward one amendment to the council rules. It's purely technical in nature, and that amendment conforms our rules to align with the operating structure that council adopted this year as part of its organization for the four-year term. The proposed changes are highlighted in red text and are contained in Rule 4, which addresses the standing committees shown on page 5. The amendment also inserts a revised table that shows the names of each of the standing committees under section two, including the number of members and the quorum for each standing committee. Section four under that rule has also been amended to reflect the creation of the race equity subcommittee under the jurisdiction of the committee of the whole. No other amendments are being recommended at this time. And again, this is a technical amendment to conform the rules to the operating structure council adopted at its organizational meeting. A resolution has been drafted that would, if approved, adopt these amended rules and identify them as the definitive rules of the council. That draft resolution was included in your briefing materials along with a marked copy of the rules with these proposed amendments I've highlighted for you. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to stand for questions the committee may have. Thank you. Um, as the clerk stated, this amendment is purely is a purely technical change that ensures our rules reflect the new committee structure. Uh, before I open up for any questions from the dais, I'd like to make a few comments. Uh, I want to acknowledge that several of my colleagues have given me feedback about how we consider as a body um, uh, the, the, the question of public uh, engagement with the community, uh, particularly with regards to public comment during uh, council committees. Um, all of us recognize this is an important issue uh, in fact, it was a key aspect of our campaigns for the most part, uh, greater access and transparency. And uh, we know that uh, the existing pro process works well for developing policy recommendations and for getting formal action uh, to, con to conduct business, but we also recognize it doesn't work so well for connecting with community um, and affording our constituents the opportunity to participate in the work of community governance. So I am proposing to form a working subcommittee to develop and bring back ideas to this committee um, about how we can engage and conduct with community. Uh, ultimately, this committee would be, uh, would then make a recommendation uh, for action by the full city council. And because I don't want this process to drag out, um, I'm also proposing that the subcommittee complete its work and submit its ideas for the next regular meeting of elections and rule, uh, and of the elections and rules committee. Uh, the city clerk has informed me that he anticipates bringing forward the 2017 uh, municipal elections report at the end of March uh, or even early April. So that gives this subcommittee about two months to complete its work so that we can take up uh, those proposals at that, at that same time. Um, and uh, I, wanna, uh, I want to first take any questions about my proposal. Oh, uh, I'm gonna take questions from, uh, from my uh, colleagues. Yep. Uh, Council Member Jenkins. Thank you, Chair Ellison. Uh, who do you propose being on this uh, <laughs> subcommittee? <laughs> um, I think a uh, subcommittee of, uh, of four people so that we're not like, you know, um, uh, just so we don't overcomplicate things. Uh, uh, and I think that it would make sense if the um, Council President and Vice President would be on it if you guys you know, don't want to add too much work to your plate. I know that, some, that uh, figuring out how we take on uh, public comment and engagement is something 
uh, that, that, that we've discussed as well. And so I'd love for your input to be a, a part of that. Um, I really like some of the things that Councilmember Cano uh, is doing with regards to public engagement with, uh, with the Public Safety Committee. Uh, and so, um, and then of course, uh, myself. And so, um, but I'm open to, to whoever has ideas around how we could better take in public comment um, being, on, being on the subcommittee. But those are some of my initial thoughts. Thank you, Chair. Uh, oh, and for the oh, uh, for the record, I want to note that we've been joined by Councilmember Gordon and Councilmember Cano, uh, and there's a question from Councilmember Gordon. Yeah, maybe it's just a uh, comment, or uh, I guess the question is, I'm wondering if the task force could look into this a little bit. Um, one of the things that's come up often is, wouldn't it be nice if the committee held a meeting in the evening out in the community on the matter and had a public hearing there? In my time, and I've been here for a few years, I think it's only happened once or twice. Sometimes we've had special topics that come up and the council shows up to and it's a special event. But a couple times it's actually been a committee that said, okay, we're going to meet now at Park Valley in the evening to discuss this issue and have a public hearing. It might be nice if the task force could look at some guidelines around that because of course when we do that and we expect the clerk to come and it to be broadcast and all of this it adds this expense and it's a, it's a bigger thing but i think there has been interest in the past and uh, i just um, want to suggest that maybe we could look at parameters i don't think there's a rule against it in our rules i do think that um special meetings can be called by the chair and it doesn't really stipulate where the locations are supposed to be but of course it's a big much bigger task to do it in the evening outside of city hall yeah, and those are exactly the type, I think, A, I think that's a good idea, and those are the types of ideas that I would hope would come out of this, this subcommittee. So. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Council President Fender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, are you, you're moving, you're making a motion to create, a, create this task force? Yes. Um, maybe I'll suggest, and I don't think this is necessary, but we could consider um, bringing through the council meeting on Friday um, a motion that puts a little more meat on the bones of the task force, describing the work pro pro products that we're hoping to see um, and which council members, if you'd like, to appoint to the task force so that we could get some of that detail that council members are asking about here put in writing for the council meeting on Friday. Okay. And we can just follow up about that. Okay. Um, and so, uh, back to the question. Uh, back to any questions for uh, Mr. Carl. And Mr. Chair, if I might, then if there are no questions, obviously uh, the motion to approve the amendments uh, going forward would be in order uh, for the body at this point. And staff would request that this committee send an affirmative recommendation to adopt the rules as proposed. Again, a technical amendment to the full council um, at its meeting on Friday. Um, and I wanted to say thank you to you as chair, uh, the new chair of elections, and also to all the council for your help in putting this together. All right. So, um, so yeah. So I will develop a, a full proposal to to bring to the council meeting by uh, Friday, um, and uh, with that settled, um, uh, and with uh, no questions to. Oh, sorry, Councilmember Gordon. I will move approval of the rules as pr provided. Submitted. Uh, second. Awesome. Second. Uh, so we have. Um, um, Councilmember has uh, Councilmember Gordon has moved. Uh, we have a second. Uh, all of those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Our recommendations to approve will be forwarded to the full city council this Friday. And as I indicated, I will have a companion motion to bring forward that identifies the specific details for the subcommittee um, on public engagement. And um, seeing no further business to be presented, this meeting is adjourned.